Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to The Witcher 3. We are back here in good old Kira Metz's, uh hut here, as she just barged past me and knocks Geralt out of the way. That's a really polite way to act, Kira. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, so we have a couple of... Um... Why is that... Scr oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot that. I forgot that this was down here. Um, right, let's go back upstairs. Uh, so we have a few little entries in the in the glossary. I think I need to have a look at uh, definitely a character. So for Serad, uh, news of the Nilfgaard and the army's approach led nobles of all ranks and orders to pack up their silver and flee post haste to safer harbors, abandoning all thoughts of defending their pa their patrimony and leaving their lands at the invaders' mercy. Lord Viserad was no exception to this rule. The magnate had ruled much of Velen from his base at Crow's Perch before fleeing with his family to take shelter in a tower on Fike Isle. The safety he sought there was not, however, to be found, and the massacre in which he was slaughtered became the source of a great many ghastly rumours and legends. According to one of them, Vesarad, unmoved by human suffering, had his, had his mage poison starving peasants who had come to him to beg for food, a hideous tale yet one that sadly seemed plausible given the desperate conditions in the land. So... Kira doubts that that is true because of the implication that she has heard from other, um, for, for, from from other people, which is interesting. Uh, so we'll certainly um, investigate that one. We've also got some new books that uh, that we bought from Kira, didn't we? Uh, we? Just need to find where they are. Uh, letter of sick. Oh no, no, we 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 know about that. Uh, I I definitely bought some stuff from from her, didn't I? Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is uh, this is all my new stuff. There are more locations marked with the cat's head pictogram than we had suspected. Yet each remains identical to the one we found in the caverns on the Temple Island, Novigrad. I have marked their locations on this map. Adalbert Kermith, adjunct to Natural History of Oxford Academy. While conducting studies under the guidance of Professor Slavko Asimstein, I happened across four places where carved engravings portrait and the sign of the Cat School of Witches could be found. All these pit pictograms are identical to that which we discovered in the caverns of the Temple of Norgard. Fantastic. Right, the Lodge of Sorceresses. This is a bit interesting one to read. Especially after the last game. So just as warty slime slathered toads croak out into the, into the fetid swamp in search of kindred company, so too do sorceresses seek their own kind, driven to gather and scheme against all that is good and worthy. The coven gathering uh, the worst of them, uh, the nab of those utterly depraved and swollen thick with the pus of magic, was the Lodge of Sorceresses. The first fiends of this lodge were Philippa Eilhart, Lady of Monte Calvo, the Triss Marigold of Maribor, Kira Metz of Carreras, Margarita Los Antilla, Sheila de Tansibur of Creden, Sabrina Gleversig of Ard Carach, uh, Fringilla Vigo of Beauclair, Francesca Finderbear and Ida Amean Elven Woman, Asia uh, Van, uh, Van Ahide and Yennefer of Wengerberg. On the summit of Ball Mountain, they gathered witches all to swear fealty to their devils and demons, their masters and lovers, and to promise to bring doom upon those living in peace in the northern realms. Twas they who stood behind the murders of Denvin, King of Erdern, Foltes, King of Tamira, and many other noblemen besides. Twas they who brought about the outbreak of yet another war with Nilfgaard. Twas they who sent plague and pox against decent gods fearing folk. Yet take comfort, dear reader, for their deeds shall not go unpunished. Our gracious leader Radovid, fifth of his name, saw, th saw through their lies and swore their deaths. Deaths as inevitable as they shall be painful. I mean, that's kind of bollocks, I'm not going to lie. Um, also, they didn't they didn't bring upon the war with Nilfgaard. That was, that's not true. Nilfgaard was actually behind the assassination of Foltest. Um, the Lodge didn't actually have anything to do with Foltest, Foltest himself. It was only Demavend. Uh, we know that for a fact because of Letho. Um, conjunction of spheres, right. Scholars have many vices. Possibly the worst among them is the tendency to describe the simple, un simple in, un in unnecessarily complex terms to dress the play in the garb of false learning. The conjunction of the spheres might serve as an excellent example of this. The name so mysterious to a common as ear could be replaced with a much simpler alternative when the worlds collided. The phenomenon itself can also be explained in terms simple enough for a child to understand. Imagine, dear reader, that our world is a ship sailing on a great sea. From its deck we can see other distant vessels. Those are the stars. These vessels each bear their own goods and their own crews. They usually pass us at some distance, barely visible specks, even viewed through a spyglass. Once every few thousand years, however, a storm breaks above this cosmic sea, a storm so strong it tosses the ships uh, toward one another, making them sail cheek by jowl. 
Part of the crew of one ship can at such times move to another and some of the cargo from one ship hold can spill onto a neighbouring vessel. When the weather calms, the ships separate once again, so they're separate in variably different ways. The so-called post-conjunction beings, namely monsters such as ghouls and basilisks, are precisely such passengers from another vessel, and we humans are castaways, flung against, against our will from somewhere far away onto a world previously inhabited by the Elder Races. Um, once here we learned the arcane mysteries of magic, unbeknownst to us before. Could the world collide once more? Perhaps. Can this cataclysm be avoided or the opposite hastened? Some scholars uh, believe there are beings who have mastered this skill, who possess rare genes allow, uh, um, allow which some to seize the helm of our vessel and steer us to safer waters or to our doom. The conjunction of the spheres is such an interesting, an interesting idea, and I think it is utilised very well. I just fear that it's also like a fallback. Like if there's anything that, if there's any, if there's any plot point that falls, but that falls by the wayside, that can't really be explained properly. They'll just go, oh, it was the, it was the conjunction of the spheres. You, you know how it is. It, it's like that. Um, it's it's an interesting notion though, and a very interesting one of that. So travel between worlds, which is also part of the conjunction of the spheres, really, isn't it? So. Uh, running through many folk tales is a common motive of travel between worlds. By, w by way of example, think of Ophelius, who ventured into the nether realms to save his beloved Theodore, who, fling a hurricane, found himself in the drab and monotonous world of Zor, or Ascilla, who tumbled down a ferret hole into a land that had never heard of wonder. Also of this ilk are the many rural legends about people captured by the Wild Hunt, only to return to their homelands after years of riding the sky with the spectral cavalcade. Academia has, for the most part, dismissed these tales as mere as mere epiphenomena of human rationality, I, on the other hand, always operate on the assumption that a grain of truth lies in every tale, and so I've decided to make it my goal to find it. After years of research, I have ascertained with great certainty that to travel between worlds is once indeed possible, though only to a select few. The key is the so-called Elder Blood, or rather, to use the scholarly term, the Gene of Lara Doran, the powerful elven sorceress. By comparing her genealogical t uh, tables against all known folk tales, I've been able to determine that she and her descendants were the archetype of the world's traveling heroes of main legends. The bearers of, uh, the bearers of Lara's gene possess an extraordinary talent which allowed them to move through time and space and to reach realms beyond the borders of the known world. The overwhelming majority of them, however, did not know how to control this. It would only manifest itself in extreme situations, pushed out by sudden bursts of emotion or whether the bearer's life was at risk. That that reminds me of uh, I don't know if anyone's ever played Valkyria Chronicles. Um, anyone who who was uh, a Valkyrie in in that game, uh, n not the Norse kind, it was their own Valkyrie. Um, that would only trigger if that that person's life is in danger as well. It's uh, I feel like abilities like that quite co quite commonly occur in fantasy games with um, sort of extra emotion or danger, you know. So. Uh, that is how the above-mentioned Ophelius, in shock after the death of his wife, could in fact journey to another world, uh, which he foolishly mistook for the afterlife. The hurricane provided the pressure needed for Theodore, terrorized the home by his zany uncle N, to unleash his talents and teleport to a world free of madcap antics. And if we read between the lines, we clearly see Asilla was a prostitute and a fist tech addict. The ferret hole represents how when she had reached rock bottom, she whisked herself away to another universe to get sober. Oh god. Okay. Unfortunately for any future um, SLS, SLSs, the sad conclusion of my research is this. Lara Doran's line has been irrevocably cut off. The last bearer of her gene, Cyrilla Fiona Ellen Rhiannon, heiress to the throne of Sintra, died childless many years ago. I... Uh, where did you hear that she died? Because I don't think that's necessarily an accurate statement. Just gonna throw it out there. Don't necessarily think that that's actually correct. Just, just gonna point that out. <laughs> just, gonna just gonna throw it out there. Don't think it's necessarily true. <laughs> kind of seen evidence. Okay, so let's. So we have a few level six quests we can do, uh, which we are now actually above the required level. Um, let's see, Tower Full of Mice. Uh, we we kind of want to do this one, don't we, for Kira. Uh, where is Fike Isle, though, is a question. Uh, so Fike Isle, we've got an aboard... Th oh, excuse me. So Fike Isle is... also oh, it's this one in the middle of the, the ocean there. So it's the one that literally has to be used um, by a... You have to use a boat to get there, where everything else I think you could probably swim or just hop over. 
Uh, should we just go and do that then? I think we could probably do that. If we if we do that and stop over at this on the way there, I think we can make that work, can't we? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So use Kira's boats to reach Fike Isle. Okay, let's go. Let's go investigate this curse and see if we can uh, see if we can lift this. I, I'm doing a lot of curse lifting recently, I feel. Um, this one is a little bit more... This one is a little bit more sinister than the last one, I'm not going to lie. Um... You know the whole the whole massacre of uh, of civilians and and whatnot and uh, potential poisoning as well. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's all it's all not good, is it? it? It's it's a bad situation. Is the drowners down there? Yes, there's drowners. Okay, drowny boys. Beautiful. A couple more drowners here. We'll take these guys out as well. Yep. There we are. Done and dusted. Monster hair? I don't think I've ever, ha I've ever found monster hair before. Ugh, drowners have hair on them. I thought they were just like proper smooth skin fuckers, but no, they're like, ugh. Ugh. Now, I wonder because if this is classified as Kira's boat, I wonder if this will just go, yeah, you're just going to travel there automatically. I don't know. Right. Uh, you can fast travel while on a boat, but only to destinations accessible via a water route. To fast travel by boat, open the world map panel while the helm of a ship. You can travel at any point marked like that. So if we open the world map on here, we can... Uh I mean, we can't really fast travel anywhere, I'm not going to lie. Well, it's, a, mm, it's probably mainly because there's a lot of places we haven't been yet, I'm going to assume is the reason for that. Yeah, we'll say, we'll say, that, 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 we'll say that that's probably the reason. Um, Alright, let's, let's sail calmly down the river. And we'll stop off at the, um, the question mark on the way there. Hello. Oh, level nine drowner. Okay. 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 Y you carry on. Is that another level nine drowner? It's probably a drowner. I don't know what uh, what level it is, but it's a drowner. So I'm going to steer well clear of that boy. We're not far. We can't be far off, are we? Oh, so we're down here, but the only place we can get to is this harbor, which is the abandoned site which we cleared. Oh, so. so so we basically un unlocked a fast travel point in a sense, didn't we? That's cool. Oops, shit, I did not mean to get out of the um, the ball like that. Let's go, girl. Let's go. Let's go. These swamps are all just absolutely just uh, infested with these bastards as well. Right, what have we got over here? Definitely looks like more drowners. I will leave the helm of the ship here. I'll take the risk. I'll take the plunge. This could go badly. Guarded treasure. It's a water hag. Ooh. Ooh! Ooh, dear, no! Ooh, I don't like that. Ugh, she's... Ugh. Ugh, look, look at her. It's gross. Set her on fire. Come on. Come on, you hag. Nice. Eat a baked apple. Uh, Ducal water. I feel like we needed that for something. Hmm, interesting. Diamond dust and Azoria rune stone, and we also have silver ore, ruby dust, cavalry gauntlets, assassins gauntlets. Nice. Okay. What are the assassins gauntlets like? Are they are they good? Oh, they are. Light. It's light armor as well. Twelve armor. Nice. Nice buffs. Yeah. I'll, I'll wear those lovely assassin's gloves. Uh, we don't have any things to put in them as of right now, but um, that's all good. Uh, did we have one to put in the weapon? No, our weapon's already maxed out when Slotsky has the one. Right, let's get back on the boat. Since we got our buried treasure, which I'm very happy about. Well, it wasn't buried, but it was guarded. Same thing, really. Right, let's go. So I'm very curious as to what we're going to find. I almost feel like we're going to find find this uh, this um, guy alive. What's his name again? 
Viserat. Ves yeah, I almost feel like we're going to find him alive. Like, I don't know why I could be wrong. Right, so... Doo -doo. A host of mice going to the tower and proceed to devour everything. Oh, really? That was why he died. He got eaten... Him and his mage got eaten by mice. Ugh. The isle had been haunted since that day, and fishermen feared to, sail the, feared to sail the lake, putting yet another dent in the already battered local economy. The local peasants thus asked Kira to lift the curse, enticed, uh, and she turned to the witcher for help. Enticed by Kira's charms and her promise of additional rewards, Geralt took on the task. The sorcerer's equipped him with a magic lamp he could use to keep him with dead souls, gave him a firm pat on the rear for good luck, and sent him off to lift the curse. <laughs> a firm pat on the rear, yes. Absolutely. Ooh! That's really weird. Splendid. I shall contact you again soon. Wait, Thank this Xena box. Can I contact you with it, or is it one way? One way only, I'm afraid. You'll have to trust my feminine intuition. Oh Jesus! What? My feminine intuition. Wonderful. I've heard I've heard her her voice actress before as well from somewhere. I just can't remember where from. It's gonna bug me. It's like a Robin Atkin down situation in Skyrim. I, I like and I I know I know him. And I know her from somewhere, but I can't Oh, this looks bad. This looks like very bad. Um Right, let's just hop onto this aisle. Rot fiends. Oh my lord. Okay. What we got? Look at these guys, honestly. Oh no 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 no! Any yeah, I need to remember me that these guys blow up on a pretty regular basis. Shit! Shit! Yep, exactly right. He's gonna blow up as well. Okay. Rot fiends are dangerous. Okay, so I had a magic lamp. No, no, not like that. Get, get. Oh, fine. Here we go. Right, allows one to see and hear ghosts. Okay, I will trudge through the... Um, Yeah, I'll, I'll trudge through this area with, with the lamp and see what I can find. Because I'd rather find ghosts if they are around, you know. Because I feel like getting some sort of exposition on this was, would probably be quite helpful if I have to make a decision somewhere down the line. I feel like the opinions of people who were actually here and saw what happened would be very useful so I'm, so I'm I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna sort of just go charging in without getting a proper read on the situation here, because a lot of this is folk tales. We don't know what to believe and what not to believe. Well, there's a hell of a lot more rot fiends over, uh, over there if they are rot fiends. Could be neckers actually. They kind of look. They kind of look like neckers. Yeah, I feel like. Oh no! Wait, I think they're drowners. Are they drowners? Yeah, they're drowners. Not particularly strong drowners. Are they gonna come down here? I'm not sure. Let me just check down here. So this looks like a little interesting little sunken, sunken passage almost. A Salmian brigandine. Ah, very interesting. Is that a, is that a good bit of armor? Mm, not really. Not really. Although uh, medium armor. We've got heavy armor on, haven't we? I'm sure this is heavy armor. The Magdiri Quiras, yeah. 
I would like to use light armor. I'm, I'm more of a fan of like a, a, dex, a dexterous kind of build, but you know. Okay, now we definitely have to fight these guys. I shall, I shall carry my lamp in one hand and swing with the other. That was a very poor use of Igni. Even with one hand, Geralt's pretty... Ooh, yeah. Even with one hand, Geralt's pretty damn good with a sword, it's gotta be said. Ow. Oh, you can't block. You can't block if, you, if, you're, if you're holding the sword in your hand like that. Sorry, if you're holding the lamp in your hand like that. That's fair enough, I suppose. That, that, that makes somewhat sense. Okay, so I'm going to end this episode here, guys. Uh, next episode, we'll press on further towards the tower and see if we can meet some ghosts along the way and find out what exactly happened here. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you all have enjoyed. If you have, then please do like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I shall catch you in the next episode of The Witcher 3. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.